Well, good morning, folks. Welcome along to the vlog. This morning, you might ask, why am I sat in the car when I've started it? Well, I didn't think I was going to get into work today, so you might want to tune out if you're eating your breakfast. Uh, but over the week, last week, um, I had a flare-up of bursitis in the knee, which was followed uh, at the end of the week by an infection in the toe caused by ill-fitting trainers, believe it or not. So I thought that infection in the toe had spread maybe into the joint and it caused me a little bit of pain over the weekend. Well, it's back with a vengeance today and it turns out I have uh, a little bit of the nicest sounding ailment on the planet. Turns out it's gout in the big toe joint. Uh, it's excruciating. It feels like I've dropped something very heavy on the foot. It hurts to lift my foot up, it hurts to put my foot down. So, it's put me in a little bit of a predicament. I have things to do at work, um, so I've come in uh, because I can hobble around at my own pace. And if I'm gonna start welding up the railings, then of course, I'm stood pretty much stationary for that. Uh, the hardest thing this morning was putting my shoes on. But we are here. And uh, I managed to be able to drive the car because pressing down on the clutch pedal, it's in my left foot, uh, was just about bearable. I don't think I would have managed if it was on my right foot when I had to use the brake and the accelerator constantly. I've just been able to change gear and then take my foot off and rest it to the side. So we're going to see how we get on throughout the rest of the day. Uh, the vlog will go ahead regardless. I'm not sure how much work I'll get done though. Let's get in and find out. So one of the jobs that I think I'm absolutely capable of doing is of course dry hopping the Rad Red IPA that we've made. I've not even tasted it yet. Perhaps I should pull a wee sample out of the fermenter before we put 2.6 kilograms of dry hops in there, just in case it isn't very nice. So the first thing I like to do Sanitize the outlet somewhat. And then there we go. First run usually has a bit of yeast into it. Let's get rid of that. Right, and now we'll come back with a clean jug. Well, it certainly doesn't look as dark as it did when it went into the fermenter. I don't know if you can see. I'll take enough for a sample on the hydrometer. Sanitize the outlet again. Make sure that, hold on a minute. Make sure that she's locked off. There we go. Right, you can come on hobble cam over to the sink <laughs> where we're going to get ourselves a sample on the hydrometer and maybe a bit of a tasty poo see how this thing's getting on so let's drop it into a pint glass yeah it's lighter isn't it don't you think that's a little considerably lighter than the brew that we made uh, is it red though? Probably looks red down here, but it doesn't look red up here, does it? No, it's orange, I think. A burnt orange. So let's get our hydrometer jar, our trial jar. Correct term for it. And then we need to degas this sample in order to get a correct reading. Otherwise the CO2 will cause the hydrometer to float. And because the accuracy of this hydrometer is to three decimal, four decimal places, then the bubbles do actually affect the reading, of course. So we'll just get those, let those bubbles subside and I'll show you the hydrometer. Oh dear. Okay, so here she is. This is my final gravity hydrometer. 
I'm always very careful with it. And as you can see on the scale here, if we zoom in a little bit, this is a Stevenson Reeve hydrometer and the scale starts at 1030, 1025, 1020, 1015, 1010, 1005 and 10. And all of that is over about, well I keep telling Gemma it's a foot, but it's actually closer to maybe uh, six, eight inches. So the scale is pretty accurate. You get 0 0.5 increments on there, which you can read off in between uh, like the 20 and the 21, so there's a 20 and a half. And then you can use your eye to segment that into five. So essentially you've got 1.0000, four decimal places I believe would be the correct term for this hydrometer. So now we've let the head subside on our sample, we can pour enough liquid in there for the hydrometer to be submerged. You've got to always handle these hydrometers with the bulb as well, never with the stem, you'll snap them off. 100% guaranteed you'll snap them off. So let's get zoomed in and let's focus right on the trial jar. So the only time you hold it by the stem is when you're dropping it in and giving it a gentle spin, like so. Well, I was meant to be focused on that, but obviously, there we are, there we are. So if I just blow the bubbles away, then we're sitting at 10, 14, 9. So 10, 1.0149 is how I'd read that. Shall we bring you in for a nice close, close view of what's going on there? So there's 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then you can just about see 15 poking its head out of the bubbles just about and I would read that at 14.9 come on camera you can get it so there we have it so I think the SG is getting down close to the final gravity reading still probably four or five maybe six points to go so we can put the dry up in at this stage, it smells very nice, you can smell the grains in there for sure. Yeah, not too raisiny, which is something I was worried about. <coughs> definitely got a strong malt backbone to it it's a really good beer as it is I think that will sell on the bar as a brown ale bitterness is about right I can't complain with that but I can't help thinking that the dry hop will add another dimension to it so yes we're gonna go ahead and put that dry hop in so I've no doubt we're gonna need two jugs for this because we're going to go for 2.641 kilos of Centennial, baby. 2.641. So let's just get the top of the bag opened up and see what we can fit into a jug. There's one. Point three four five get it close six fifty. Well that's close enough for the girls I go out with. We want two kilos in this one. So 
No, one kilo. <laughs> Careful, lad. Can't fit two kilos in them. And there we go. So we'll come back and backpack that in a second. I'm going to go and slowly pour these into the fermenter. But there we go, folks. That is the dry hop edition. I'm not going to take the camera with me on this because I've got two jugs of hops and a bad foot. So now I've hobbled into my hovel. Yes, here we are in front of the bench, ready to get on with putting these railings together. So I've got some steel to cut. I uh, learnt a little bit doing that first railing yesterday. I'm going to cut down all of the pickets first to be the same size as the top and bottom rail which is here. So once we've got all this lot cut to the same height then we can go ahead and lay them all out, tag them all together, stand them up and then mold them completely. That's the plan anyway. I don't think this one's going to get completed in four hours like the other one did yesterday. Oh no sir. I think this one is going to take a honk of a lot longer. Oh bollocks. Excuse me, I'm just doing a bit of tidying up. <laughs> right. That's enough of that prattin' around. Let's turn the radio on. I've got a day's work to do, don't you know? So yesterday when I put together all of these uh, pickets for the railing, I just lined everything up and uh, welded it on. This time I've done something different. I've cut all the pickets to size first, so they're exactly the same size. And what I've also done is blast the end of it with a uh, flapper wheel to just take a little bit of the mill scale off. I haven't gone to town on this, it was just literally zzz, 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 either side. But it really has made the end a lot brighter, so let's hope that the welds kind of take a little bit better to the steel today. They were fine yesterday, they just looked a little bit like bird poo. Just a little bit mind. So, uh, fingers crossed that that works, so I'm going to exchange my face shield for grinding for a face shield for welding we're going to spark up the old SAFMIG tentragazillion and uh, see if we can't get some sparks out of her Right, we've completed the second of the two railings and for the third one we need to put a curve into some of the steel. So I pulled out the uh, rollers, the slip rolls and uh, there's probably a lot of people uh, watching the video who have not seen this thing in action. So um, yeah, this is where I meet a gory end and get sucked into it. 
but what we're trying to achieve is a circle shape out of one of these flat bars uh, of around 800 mil in diameter, 400 radius. So I'm going to get a piece of steel, get some gloves on and give it a go. Right, I've employed the assistance of Stu. He volunteered. Everyone else took a step back. So I don't know how this is going to work because um, I haven't measured anything out, frankly. And this steel's already got a bit of a bend in it. In fact, I'm surprised they sent it to me. If you look down that edge, it looks like a bloody uh, refresher bar. But yeah, let's get in the forward direction, which is that way. And let's just see briefly, in fact, it might be smarter to, yeah, to set the rollers to the right width. I don't want to go too deep in the first roll, but we've got to miss that back. Hole, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's got to come up a little bit. Yeah, right. Watch your fingers. Let's see if this works. Watch your give it up. Watch your give it up. I did calculate how much steel I actually need for this, but uh, I didn't want to cut it off. I thought we'd just roll it all. I can always flatten that out if I need it for something else, put it back through, can't I? Let's go show a little bit more. The machine. I need it to be 800 diameter, so it's going to come in. I think it worked out about 15, uh, 1250 or something like that. Pause the video and we'll go and cut it to size. We'll have to do some calculations. Circumference of a circle, I think. Well, I don't know how I managed to guess it, but yeah, the uh, circumference of an 800mm circle turns out to be 1250. That's not bad going, is it? So let's put this back into forwards mode. Uh, tweak our back ring up a touch. aren't they because I've got it a little bit longer than what I need it so I need to over bend if you know what I mean over roll it I think we it over roll it they say we're going to give you any mercy if this gets you with the thickness of all the steel you reckon that's too much Could be right. It's certainly made. It's approaching a hoop, isn't it? You want to hold that for me? I'll just measure it. Let's put your finger on it. I don't think it's meant to go to the hoop. 
Oh yeah, we've overrolled it. Now we have to figure out how to unroll it. Never expected I'd do that today. By the way, it needs to be. Yeah, but then it's going to just uh, completely cock over the program, isn't it? Because it'll totally straighten it. I know what you mean, in there like that. Mm. We're not looking to straighten it though, are we? I'd bring it, I'd bring it this way because otherwise we're going to hit this. Is that going to hit that there? No, we're still above it. What I'm thinking is... Which thing is You know the way we would have... I've just flipped it, I know. Oh, you just flipped it. Now we're just trying to even out that curve because where we've pulled, it's probably pulled and opened this section up more than it has on these sections. I think that'll do. There's a ring. Right, now I'll just have to try and put that back. Go on, still. <laughs> so I've run into a small hiccup. I picked this piece of bar up and I'll explain. So I needed to have a 400mm distance from there to there which made me immediately think I was having a circle with a radius of 400mm. In fact, I needed to have an oval because the top opening needs to be a thousand millimeters in order to accommodate the tree that we've got going, growing on the canal bank. So that means I need to find an extra 100mm somewhere on either side. So what I thought of doing is taking this bar and bending it into another semicircle and in fact putting it on the edges here so we have it almost looks like a bite mark coming out the top if you know what I mean so I've hooked up the uh, rollers again we did actually push them out of the way initially but for these small pieces I think we can uh, get away with using them where they are and hopefully and hopefully we should be able to replicate a couple more circles using these two pieces of scrap metal so I'll roll one, the big one first and then we'll see if we can roll the small one into a similar radius and if I lose my fingers you've got the best view in the house there folks Reset. Make sure we're going to miss that back roller, which we are. Oh, beautiful. And we missed the staircase. Perfect. Let's wind that up a bit. There we go. Get 
that strike you? I think that might be a goer. Right, so, this is part of the offending article that we could essentially weld that into there. How does that look? And you know what? If I'm smart enough, I don't need to roll that other piece. I can cut this baby in half down the middle there, ish, and we've got the two. Oh, I think that's going to do it, folks. Hey, problem solved. So I put them on. That's what she looks like. What do you think? So all I have to do now is cut these sections off and these two and then we'll have woodum, 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 boom. If you know what I mean. I'm gonna power through. It's four o'clock, just about, and uh, my foot is beginning to become an issue now. I'm really struggling just to stay on my feet more than anything else. Uh, so I really want to get these uh, pickets in there before I actually go home. So I'm going to push on. I've got most of them cut. Uh, I just need to cut a few more. And then I've got Stuart painting them up there. So if I can at least get these done today, then even if I don't come to work tomorrow, Stuart can continue with the painting and get them ready for mounting on the wall. Then I've just got a couple of brackets to make and then next week a bit of brick work if I've got time. I think I've given myself sunburn on my arms because I've not worn my welding jacket. I maybe should have done, I will do next time. But, c'est vie. You know what I'm like. Well, in a china shop, folks. I'm very pleased with it, actually. Very pleased with it. Say we've used the rollers. So here we go, folks. That's the last piece of the puzzle. What do you think to that, bad boy? I'm really chuffed with it, to be honest. Let's pop it against the uh, cold room. And we'll take you off the tripod and have a look. Oh, I feel like I need a bath big time. Oh, yes. Hey, I'll tell you what. Could get into this. £500 a panel, folks. Who wants to buy some? Hey, branching out. We could be branching out. So I think we got away with the uh, gapage there by putting these two extra curves in because if we'd have just stretched that out like this, I don't think it would have been as deep. Maybe wrong, but I don't think it would have been as deep here. So that's going to help us navigate that tree a little bit, a little bit better. I wasn't too sure whether to put baskets, like half a basket there. I don't think it would have looked right because I've been cutting into a basket. So I think the way I've done it and just continued the four baskets along the bottom and just stopped the side baskets when they come to the, uh, you know, the curve, kind of works. So we'll have that one there and it'll be directly next to that one. And then the third one, which Stu's painting, I'll be able to get there in 15 minutes when I limp up the uh, limp up the brewery. So there we are. He's just spun it round, I'm guessing, yeah, to do the other side. So you can't really see how good it looks. But uh, I think once we've got some gold in the baskets and some gold on the logo, it's going to look shit art. Right there we go. So oh, don't look too bad today. I'm not doing my minstrels impression. Uh, so yeah, I'd say I'm gonna wrap it up. There's no beer reviews or anything going on tonight. I'm just gonna uh, end the vlog here. Go home, have a shower. <laughs> Following me down, you it. Have a shower and then uh, see if I can't lay up for the evening and try and get rid of this gout. I'm pretty sure it's gout. It certainly feels like it. Anyway, uh, cheers for tuning in, folks. We'll be back tomorrow with some type of vlog, I'm not sure exactly what but hopefully we'll be a little bit closer with these panels and uh, if they're all painted tomorrow afternoon we might even get them I was going to say get them on the wall but we can't, I've got to build a wall God, never ends does it
We'll see you tomorrow.